Hey everyone, what's up? So, this is my progress on uh, the Black Temple that I started a while ago on uh, my Twitch chat, Twitch stream. And, uh, yeah, this is probably gonna end up as a video. So, I'm streaming to YouTube uh, while recording some footage. So, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to to ask them also in the comments if you are watching the recording and yeah this started out as a as a speed paint uh, but I did like it too much to just go over it uh, quickly and yeah I felt a lot more invested um, than just doing um, a speed paint and now I'm trying to get some some detailing in and make it look a bit more pretty than it does now so right now I just want to touch up a few areas okay and like I said I'm going to refine some of the black even even further before we are probably going to switch to the cape back here. So yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. So let's see, hunting for areas that I haven't really painted yet. And also the areas that are supposed to be black. I'm just going to cover them with a mixture of black and a tiny bit of, of grey just to dull down the, the shine of the base coat that is still visible in some places and then I go back in with some black to get the, the darker colors out again Let me know if anything is unclear or if the video is not sharp enough because sometimes I will go up on paint like this and then the video is not really sharp. <laughs> okay, so like I said, trying to search for reflective areas that I need to tone, tone down still. Like these. here just carefully cut touching those areas like I said just to give them a reduction of, of shine because the scale colors are rather matte hey Kevin I'm fine thanks how are you I hope you're doing good as well just unwinding with some painting Kind of sad that I can't play music because it will uh, get copyright stri strikes by by YouTube. So we have to <laughs> keep the conversation going to to stay entertained. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. It helps me keep you entertained, and uh, yeah.
Okay, so I think that's almost it. I'm just gonna mix a few more colors. Ah, uh, thank you so much, Kevin. I like I said, it started out as a speed paint, but I I just felt like putting in the extra work after <laughs> the the limit of time that I set myself was was over. <laughs> So yeah, this is about nine hours of work. I said uh, I'm, I'll try to be done in in eight hours, but I didn't quite make it. So that's why I'm turning this into a an instructional piece instead. So how's everyone else doing? Don't just lurk. Speak up. Ask for a shout out. <clears throat> okay. Um, still got these areas that We'll catch some light. Mm, do you use water or thinner to dilute your paint? Um, I just use water. It's they are acrylic colors, so you can just use water. Since they are water water based, makes it all a bit easier to paint. Just trying to identify areas that will catch more light than others. And then gradually building some contrast. Fifty-fifty. Um you can see my palette cam up here it depends a bit so sometimes I will go for um, I can't really say you know because I have color on uh, the brush and then I just dip my brush in again and then it's obviously um, different dilution ratio and sometimes I will also just use pure color so if I want good coverage I use a dilution that has not a lot of water in it uh, but yeah if I want to to create some blendings then I I need a higher dilution but um it's probably as a rule of thumb it's very rarely 50 50 it's probably more color usually than than that but again, it's, it's really hard to say. Because you, you end up um, just doing it on the fly and ju uh, judging or doing it by, by experience. Okay, yeah, you still don't know how to do this back here, but I think I'll just emphasize those edges. And then maybe have some line here. 
Hey to Salem, how's it going? Oh, you're welcome, Kevin. Like I said, if you guys have any any questions, just feel free. That's what I'm here for. Uh, hold on, I just need to work on my um, tripod here so that you can actually see what I'm painting or what I'm doing on my palette, rather. Um, Black is a pain in the ass to paint. <laughs> Did you use pure black or some combination of black and gray for the base? Um, I painted directly over the black base coat and you can see I applied some mixture of gray. So you can see here, uh, this is all almost black, just with a bit of gray mixed in. Um, let's see, this is maybe better. Yeah, so you can see I just dragged a bit of gray in, into this and this is my base color. And then up here you can also see there's some gray um, mist over it and all the areas that are only base coat, for example here, um, are still shiny. So this round shape uh, I obviously didn't, did not touch with color other than the, the spray base coat because I'm going to to glue the, the second arm on there anyway. But you can see that it's still shiny and that shows the, the difference in the base coat and the first layer. So um, yeah, when painting black I use, usually start from a really dark gray and not from, from black directly and then I'm also not afraid to go up to almost white on the edges because you need to contrast. Um, you want to portray a character that is probably larger than two meters and uh, yeah therefore you need all that contrast all the contrast you can get <laughs> hey Kratoswick show them my uh, my sh I think man the sound of places <laughs> A uh, big welcome to Brazil then. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not good with Portuguese. Apologies. <laughs> Just going to, like I said, I I started it as a, a speed paint, and that's why I'm correcting a few things here and there now, and that's why I'm yeah just going over the whole miniature and not staying in one place. I'm just adding more lights on some areas and toning it down in others. So how's everyone doing that just joined? Hope you're doing fine. Guess in Brazil the day just started. Ah, oh, then again. Okay, so again, um not to worry it's to also go up to light on some parts of the black armor what gray am I using? I'm using uh, scale colors exclusively I'll show you in a second Just give me a moment, just want to finish this. <clears throat> um, so the acrylic colors that I use are scale color. 
again they are acrylics uh, so that you can just thin them down by using water and I just mixed black with some graphite to start with uh, and I also went over with with a blue you can see that just on the edge of the black you can see the blue shine uh, here for example it's barely visible but it adds to yeah it adds a lot more interest to the armor uh, making black templates using ashing gray and dawnstone from citadel range but usually just do highlights on the edge um to be super honest i don't i don't have any citadel colors simply because i i like the matte um, finish of the scale colors so um, I can't really give any any advice on on citadel colors. But I'm I'm sure your results are looking good. Like I said it doesn't matter so much what colors you use, uh you just have to be happy with them and uh yeah, and like the results that you get. Personally, I like the, the matte finish a lot more than the, the skill colors have. So that's just my... That's why I went for them. Okay, so I also do touch those, um, yeah, the edges. So I also do some edge highlighting. But then I also go in and do a few highlights on, oops, I'm sorry, I'm off camera. Um, do a few highlights on other areas too, for example here. just to make everything a bit more interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, since I have a bit of a mix, a bit of a gradient mixed, if I find something too harsh, some contrast is too harsh, I just go back in and tone it down like this. <laughs> Thank you, Salem. Yeah, like I said, uh, I'll try to make a video that's explaining the, the major steps and then the the more in-depth uh, tutorial is going to be on my Patreon, probably. Sorry, sometimes I have to focus. That's when I go quiet. But uh, again, don't don't worry. Just ask regardless. I'll catch up with Chad. Oh, okay. There's a bit of an area that I forgot to paint. Just up here, and also on those parts. Hey, Mr. Fishman. <laughs> yeah, no, it comes with practice. I mean, once you're more confident on how much color you need on uh, on the brush to do certain things, it's it's getting easier and easier. I guess, like everything, with practice.
So something that I also do is, uh, for example, here, I'll touch on the edges with um, not pure white, but some gray mixed into white. And that kind of does look like chipping effects. Um, you can also try that here, for example. Uh, where did I want to do it? Ah, uh, here. So just having a bit of distortion in that edge will make it look like um, some shinier material is coming through. You can also do that here, for example. Hey Lois, how are you doing? Yeah, it's gonna take a while because with between Patreon and uh, the free stuff and streaming and all that and private life and trying to earn money <laughs> is uh, yeah rather limited time frame. That's why my YouTube releases have been a bit scarce uh, lately. But I uploaded a glazing tutorial, glazing and layering, and um, in about five days, there's going to be a, a video that has been released on, on Patreon first about painting faces. That's also going to go live. So there's some content in in the waiting in the waiting. Okay, so like I said, there's nothing wrong with highlighting edges. Just try to make them look interesting. Don't make the the edges all the same thickness. Uh, try to to start with a darker color and just do like if you were highlighting, just cover everything with a bit of a darker color, and then go back in and cover less area with uh, a lighter color and that also spices up the the edge highlighting okay um need to find something to do with that great i don't really like how it behaves we'll see Yeah, so slowly finishing all the areas that needed highlighting. set up differently than I'm used to so that's why I sometimes use um, move off screen sorry for that Yeah, also, like I said, don't be afraid to not paint everything as a gradient. Sometimes you want pure color. It's 
especially if you want to show some texture. <clears throat> Do you think the new marines are easier to paint? Um, easier to paint than the old ones. Um, I kind of feel like they are somewhat the same. I don't think either or the other is, is easier or less easy. They are just... Um, on one side they are easier to assemble as because you don't have multi-pose. <coughs> They're just one pose and that's all you can assemble them as. And But at the same time I feel like that uh, you're losing a bit of variety there. So <coughs> all armies start to to look a bit the same. I feel that is a bit of a, that that's a bit of a shame. But yeah, I don't think they are any any more easier or worse to paint than than the others. They have some areas that are rather ugly because of the way that the the molds work. So they have steel molds and you will have no undercuts and I'm not really a fan of that but yeah in general I I still like the Primaris Marines really good <coughs> uh, it's yeah it's a Primaris captain in some upgraded armor I'm not a hundred percent sure about the fluff because I um, yeah I usually just paint those miniatures And I don't don't play or yeah. Hmm. Didn't quite mix the color here, so we had to go back in. Don't seem to be getting those right. <laughs> it's probably my fifth try now. Okay, so now, as you can see, I go back in with some black here to bring out that in between black color again but this time it's less shine because it's a, a scale color and not the not the base coat Hey Warporn, uh, he stayed back with some other legion. Um, it's a uh, Black Templar. At least you know in my world, Black Templars do have gold rims. At least the captains. <laughs> so yeah, heresy. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So I'm just a painter, like I said, and uh, I. Some people get upset when you don't do entirely like the fluff tells you, tells you to. But I don't really care because I I have to have them stand on my, in my dis display cabinet then, and not them. So I just paint them the way that I I like them. Even if it's not as per fluff or. Yeah, background. Uh, 
Uh, you're making me want to have another go at my Death Watch. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the uh, I was painting Death Watch when I started painting, mm, and I had to also had to deal with the black back then. <laughs> but I was um, I was less. I had less experience then, and it was a, a bit of a hard task. Uh, but yeah, also, I'm also working on this guy at the moment. Also, a quite interesting model. The um, yeah, the other half of that box. So, I did I did convert this one to look a bit more like the Nurgle than I know, mm, because I feel like at the moment. They have a bit of a comic approach, and uh, for to me they almost look like caricatures, and not the the menacing, dark, broody uh, things that Nurgle was for me all the time. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty fond of this area here. Quite happy how that turned out. <laughs> I think that just answered your your question, uh, Salem. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm trying to, you know, do different things. In this case, I, like I said, I converted it and re the parts, and then I also did some non-metallic copper. That's also probably not what people usually go for on these, but, you know, I just want to, to keep it interesting also for me. All right, so one step. <laughs> no, it should make you feel sick. <laughs> yeah, um, let me just change my water because it's um, not that good anymore. Uh, I'll be back in in thirty seconds. Don't go anywhere. So the reason I'm changing water here is because I want to um, go over those areas with the black wash now and that wash is supposed to be rather thin and if I have dirty painting water uh, and all the the pigments that, that come from the black and the grey in there then uh, <clears throat> that's not going to look good because it's going to tint that very thin wash into the grey, into a grey tone, a grey wash, and I really want the, the blue to, to come out. Uh, what do you think about Slanish army? Isn't it kind of misplaced now? I mean, a lot of people speak about Slanish dropping balls. I have no idea what you just said, I'm sorry. <laughs> are you are you talking about uh, rules or... Uh, like I said, I'm not a gamer. I'm, I, I only paint. I can't really comment on, on anything that's gaming related. I haven't read a codex in probably 12 years. <laughs> uh, okay, one little trick that I always do when doing washes, if I can find it. Okay, here. And yeah, just to mention it, so this this video is going to go up on on YouTube in five days, so about painting a face with a beard and yeah, that should also be interesting to some of you, I guess. Ah, uh, the water is pretty pretty clean. <laughs> nah, like I like I said, when I want to apply a rather thin glaze or a wash or whatever you want to call it to tint the, the armor, then I don't need any pigments in there that I don't want to be. As you can see, this is rather thin. So if I took out painting water out of my container earlier, it would have probably looked the same just with gray in it. And that's, uh, I really don't want that. So let's see, uh, I still feel this up here needs some blue.
and the blue is to make the color a bit more intense uh, but also to make our shadows even colder as blue is usually associated uh, with cold colors and shadows in general look rather cold and yeah you really want to to put some color variation into your black uh, your black because even though it does look decent already <coughs> it just adds that extra tiny bit of interest that your eye can look for <coughs> and that's that's exactly what you want to do with miniatures keep the eye occupied and keep the eye searching <clears throat> and you know sometimes you will look at a miniature and say hmm that looks really good but I can't point my finger and it's uh, it's subtle changes like that that are barely visible but you notice they are there Drink it, <laughs> Nurgle will visit you. He looks like my dad. Which blue is that? Um, it is uh, Dark Sea Blue by Vadeo uh, Vallejo. Um, model color. It's a rather saturated deep blue. That also works pretty good on, on non-metallic metal. We can try that up here. So going to cover everything slightly and it should intensify our colors. You can already see it gets a lot more intense. It even makes black more intense. So I usually do that to draw together the colors, make the gradients a bit smoother, but also to bring out the intensity a lot more. Try not to have coffee staining. Yeah, now I'll go back in later and apply a second coat. comments yeah I guess I haven't really followed his patreon I uh, think was in it for for the first month but um, yeah it just wasn't for me but uh, there's some really good information there and it's also you know Joining it now <laughs> gives you a year of access for ten dollars. <clears throat> but yeah, I also don't really have the time to watch patrons. I do have the Aradia patron. I uh, have pledged for them because I also sculpt for them, and uh, I always enjoy seeing them paint my stuff. Uh, for example, the fallen. The fallen angel that's going to come out or that was an add-on for the kickstarter is done by me
but other than that I don't really have any patrons pledged I simply don't have the time also I didn't want to um, to get carried away and, and copy others with my own patron <clears throat> so I'm trying to keep it fresh and keep my own style which I think could go could get lost if I look at others too much okay a bit more I don't have any elders to show I only have uh, a sculpted Eldar if I can find it as it's rather dark here oh there it is so this is an Eldar I sculpted after an artwork um, I think it was in a codex he's still missing that loincloth from uh, from the artwork but I kinda lost inspiration so that's how he's going to stay <laughs> just an example of, of sculpt work yeah I also made the base myself and the sword and all that but I I mean I could paint this one up or maybe have it cast before just so I have the original still <clears throat> but I, I never painted any Eldar, as far as I remember. <laughs> okay, I want some more blue. Yeah, it, uh, I went. I wanted to go for a bit of an action pose. <laughs> Scouts will do. Love the hair. Yeah, they. They have some 80s uh, glamour rock or glam rock hair for sure. Okay, adding more of that blue. Also on this metal I think I'm going to add a darker mix of this blue just so that it looks a bit more like steel And I'm trying to avoid coffee staining. <laughs> yeah, definitely looks a lot more interesting and it looks deeper and richer. It's really, really interesting how that works. just works really good in general over grays and blacks and all that all the variations in between <laughs> I think the this hand needs one more go and back here I think I'll also add one more that was maybe a bit too much So 
so like I said, this end. Uh, just off the head, do you think you would have a problem painting L out of Kane? Um, what do you mean with problem? I mean, I would have to to come up with a with a color scheme, but I'd probably just do the reverse um, molten molten lava thing. Where you paint uh, the the outer shell um, black or blackish gray <coughs> with some ash covering maybe, and then just as you go deeper, uh, you go lighter. Just realized I forgot this part, which sucks a bit because now we have to be careful. Just some light on the leg. Doesn't really want to stick, but I guess that's due to it still being the base coat. <clears throat> but yeah, if you if you can explain your question a bit different so I understand maybe I can answer it better so are you looking for some inspiration on, on that or what exactly? What kind of advice are you looking for? Oh, I've got something again. <laughs> uh, these parts down here, okay, that was a bit much. <laughs> this back here thanks tunnels glad you enjoyed Yeah, there's uh, a lot more content in my YouTube and also my Patreon uh, does have a lot of tutorials if you want to check that out. I think there's uh, a link in my banner, or should be at least. Okay, so... I think I'm somewhat happy with this. <laughs> Maybe 
you just give the face one more one more pass well the the helmet not the face obviously but you get what I mean um you can with me I'm gonna order some taxi blue <laughs> consistency of a wash uh you're doing now or more diluted well uh the thing is guys don't don't get too hung up on on dilution recipes and stuff like that just um try to get the feel for it yourself um so i don't know i'm guessing this would be considered a wash consistency usually right and uh i'm going even lighter usually on that so more like this uh, hold on. so I'm just breaking the surface tension so you can see that yeah so probably even lighter but you know sometimes I will go back in and take a bit more if I want the intensity to be bigger and uh, coverage of the gray for example should be a bit more blue then I just take more and uh, yeah so I just adjust the amount of water as I go along don't uh, get too stuck in what seems to be right or what other people call right because uh, if you take this color it's gonna be a different um, ratio to get to um, a usable wash um, then for example with this color I mean of course this is a lighter color or let's say this turquoise so from pigment to pigment it's going to change so don't get too hung up mm, <clears throat> try it out and uh, yeah that way you get a lot more independent from um, yeah from ratios and all that so that blue took away a bit of the white up here I'm trying to bring that back Yeah, exactly. I, I have a bit of dish soap here. You can't really see it, but uh, it's there. <laughs> it mixed uh, into the color by accident. Okay. Um, I think I want to paint this in gold just because I, I feel like that surface is not really broken up. So let's try to do that before we go to the red <coughs> on this area. Mm. <clears throat> now I need to remember the recipe that I used. Uh, I think I got it. Uh, no, that's not the right yellow. Um, too much stuff on my table. Uh, okay, where's my desert yellow? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so I mix those two for the base color. And I'm basically just mixing white. Palette is getting full. I'm imagining the light source from straight above. I mean, I generally do paint a global light as in senatal light, you know, with the inclination of 20 degrees, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, <coughs> um, in the end, when painting non-metallic metal, you're going to end up cheating anyway, because there's no way to paint this correctly 
you will also have you will always have to do a bit of an interpretation but yeah here I for example I emphasize the upper parts a bit more so for example that edge up here uh, so it's definitely light coming from above but yeah also don't don't get too hung up on that try to have a, a global source of light from above I mean in my case you know I have the reflection up here so he's probably standing like this and then you have a direct light from above but again don't get too hung up on it it's way more it's in it usually makes um, I mean it's just way more interesting if you just focus on, on getting contrasts in and not so much on whether this highlight should be a tiny bit more up here and so on I mean again you, you're going to have to cheat a bit. I mean, I have no idea if uh, this is like a cylinder or part of a cylinder, right? So it has to be highlighted like this. Um, but you know, I that could be completely wrong. Maybe the, the light is more like here and uh, you will have two shadows here and here. But then also as you turn it around, it's going to change. Um, trying to find a cylinder. Ah, yeah, I have one. So, look at this, right? There's uh, one highlight and then there's a few secondary highlights. And as you turn it around, I mean, this is going to be hard to show because the object changes and not the, the light source. And uh, yeah, if you were looking at it from this side, this light thing would go more to this side and so on. So yeah, just, you know, don't uh, don't overthink it. <coughs> just just acknowledge that there's going to be some um, vertical highlighting involved to make that piece uh, interesting. And yeah, then just go with it and decide on what you want to do, and then just go for it. So no, there's no use to overthink it because you can never paint. Um, 100% correct miniature that that's not gonna happen not even historical painters can do that okay just a few lost bits of light Hey there, uh, I don't know how to, I, I forgot how to pronounce your name. <laughs> uh, also, I can't read it in Kyrillic. <laughs> hey Alex, how's it going? Hi, hey, welcome Thanos. Do what you feel is right. Yeah, exactly. Because also, uh, different people are going to tell you different dilution ratios and so on you know it's you you have to find your own way with painting it, it no one can take that from you unfortunately or take that off of you Okay, that was crap. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Always take care how the hairs on your brush look before you do that. Meh. Okay. We will have to paint some black there and do this again. Just don't forget to leave this to dry. Now what I usually do is I, I try the 
the pattern that my brush leaves on my thumb first so that I know how I need to hold it on the miniature and so on. No, of course it's dry. Hmm. This white color is a bit elusive. Okay, so as you can see, I just put a dot there right in the middle of the where the line curves down. I also did that here, for example. That's just an area that would reflect a lot of light. Because of the weight curves. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah, it was just a, a quick non-metallic impression. Okay, but uh, back to back to the gold that we wanted to do. So I'm mixing those two, and you can see this one is a bit more intense, and this one is a bit desaturated and, and less intense, more earthen pigments. Um, I should really learn these, uh, how to name those correctly, tint, hue, and so, and so on. There's distinct meanings of those words. Right now I'm too lazy to learn them. <laughs> so I take this and mix some black in. And this is going to be our base color. Let's see if I like it. Uh, no, I still want more black and also maybe more earthen. Yellow. And yeah, I never do an exact mix. Uh, I just go by feeling. And then I just, if I want it to be darker, or if it should be lighter and so on. Uh, still too, still too intense. Any other color while I'm ordering dark sea blue? You think is a valuable color to have? That's off the top of my head. I I can't answer that. Because I, yeah, I will just, you know, think of something that I have to paint and then the color will come to me again. But I, I don't really have it, uh, like, saved. Like, on a hard drive, unfortunately. Sorry. Okay, I think I want this even darker. I mean, I do have all the scale colors. Um, I don't have all of the Vallejo colors uh, because, like I said, I, I have the, the scale colors and that's what I switched to a long time ago. I can I can recommend all the scale colors. 
but I don't think that's what you wanted to hear, sorry. Okay, let's try highlighting this and then we are going to shade it down. So going for a bit of a yellow. Okay, we still need to leave it to dry. <coughs> Um, much more interest now in gold. Um, oh yeah, 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 definitely. I was dedicated to painted in. Oh my god. Uh, okay, there we go. I was dedicated to painted in in grays, but I feel it looks more interesting now. That's for sure. Playing a bit with the mid tones. We'll have to decide on the fly how far up I go. Takes a bit of time to dry. <laughs> so we have to be patient. What about white? Does I currently use Citadel white, which is awful? Um, I have this one. I hear, yeah, it says ink, but it does mix with all, <clears throat> does mix with all acrylic colors that you can get. Um, <clears throat> I hear others do like the Schmink uh, Titanium White. I heard that is also a good white, uh, mainly because it has it covers everything with just one layer. Which is a good thing. Okay, so I feel like that yellow is a bit too intense, but then again, maybe that adds a bit of interest. Don't want a too regular finish. Kind of like it when there's a bit of distortion in the color. Okay, so from here on, I think I'm just going to add white. <laughs> ah, drying is leaving stuff to dry is a bit, uh, a bit of a pain in the ass, but what can you do? Yeah, so apparently white, the, the acrylic colors that are obtainable through, uh, through miniature companies, they're apparently not that good because everyone I know that tries to be serious about painting is is using uh, any form of artist white instead of any of the acrylics that are out from ninja companies. Okay. 
let's see. Okay, that's maybe a bit too intense. Did look good as a as an edge highlight, but covering areas is probably this is probably too too intense for that. So time to put some black in there. And you see I did add um, a reflection from below. Uh, it's maybe a tiny bit too much down. So let's see if we can correct that. Yeah, that should probably come up a bit more. Tone this down. So yeah, you don't want the lower reflection to start right um, at the lower edge of that area. Mm, model color white, it's not so chalky. Um, I don't know, um, it depends a lot on how you use it. But yeah, um, j just go out and ask 20 painters and everyone's going to have a, a different favorite white. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Okay, what else can we do? I think I want to paint a few more reflections. Like this. Make those a bit distorted. So large areas like this you will probably want to break up a bit. Just create some interest, interesting areas. So, like I said, this I want to tone down again. Maybe add some black there again.
Yeah, again, here I'm purely making this up. I uh, don't have any reference pictures or stuff like that. But typically you do have some reflections like this uh, in gold. Okay, I had some yellow drying in on my brush. I want to just get rid of that because you know, you don't want to have stuff drying on your brush. Always clean it before it can get to that. Make this a bit more three dimensional. And typically, I don't uh, really with gold. I, I try, I mean, here for example, uh, it's an obvious edge that should be highlighted, <coughs> but. With complicated shapes like this, I, I tend to paint the highlights uh, not really just up on the edge, but rather a tiny bit downward. So I start about here. Yeah, just try to create some interesting uh, surfaces and don't get too stuck in classic painting approaches like edge highlighting and so on, which is, you know, fine for um, painting armies and all that. But if you want to take your painting to the next level a bit, then try to, to play with those options. And again, it's like I always like to say, just like Bob Ross said it, it's your world. Uh, you are the creator. You can do whatever you want. Unless, I mean, even still, if you, if you want to stay true to the fluff, then that's also fair enough. And uh, you can do that as well. But you know, if you just want to have fun painting, then just never be afraid to try new things and try crazy things and all that. Right, so one thing that I want to do, I just want to add a bit of a, a scratch here. That's just the extra level of detail that you can add. Of course, you can also highlight an edge somewhere, just don't do it everywhere. Maybe a bit more white. 
good old Bob. <laughs> but it's true, right? It also does apply to miniature painting. I think that's as light as I want it to go. Uh, so I'm also going to touch the rivets here. <laughs> and then we should maybe think about doing something interesting with the rim, uh, the trim, the rim. But that can get tricky because it's rather thin and I don't want to ruin the rest. Let's see. Yeah, it, uh, oh my god, I just did what I tried to avoid. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably do that uh, off camera with with a smaller brush. Hey Unrei, how are you doing? Yeah, uh, don't just focus on the highlights with gold, also go for for shadows. Um, you want contrast in, in all of your non-metallic, don't forget that. So whether it's, it's steel or whatever this metal is supposed to be, or gold, uh, always yeah, go for contrast and for some interesting features in in the gold itself. <clears throat> okay, so I think I, I just want to try one more thing. Wait. Uh, Where is, uh, okay, I did use red leather on the cloak. And I have to decide whether I want to go for some texturing too. I think I will, but I just need to shake it. <laughs> going to apply one more layer because you can see in some areas there is uh, not a consistent paint also I touched these edges here and rubbed some of it off while I was painting something else So what's everyone else painting usually? And are you painting at the moment or are you guys watching from work or what are you doing? And are you more the gamer or are you more inclined to paint, to just paint? And what are your preferred armies and uh, factions? Let's hear about that. So if you have anything to share, don't uh, don't hesitate. You can post a link. Uh, just make it like uh, Instagram or uh, what's the 
imager or something like that and then I can tr trustly open it and show it on, on stream. Ultramarine veteran. Uh, yeah, I uh, for I do like blue. Uh, I do like ultramarines too. But usually, what I do for my ultramarines is this. I tend to to rather do them in a bit more of a turquoise color. That leaves me with more um, options to to shade them down and go up to white, or not not really white, but uh, just the hint a hint of white. Um, yeah, that gives me more options to create shades and highlights and that uh, metallic finish that the armor gets works a bit better with turquoise than with ultramarine blue, for example. Watching from work, we should usually paint D and D. Oh, okay, D and D images are cool. I'm not sure you can link on you. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> not with that attitude. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. Right, so. We have to come up with a, a highlight color. Um, I'm debating whether I should just use a lighter red or if I'm going to mix in something else. Uh, let's see. Let's see how this looks. Just gonna go for a lighter shade of that scarlet. I just realized my pal cam is a bit out of focus, at least in this area. Uh, yeah, I guess I think you can still see good enough. All right, just gonna add a first layer and then put it in. Putting it on, <laughs> putting it on rather thick and pasty. And those areas that I want lighter than the rest anyway. And then as I go into, hmm, you know, that's unfortunate in the color. Maybe we can get rid of it. Easy game, easy life. Yeah, so again, applying it in a pasty consistency. Consistence, is that a word? I think it's consistency. Uh, is it only me or is am I a little hard to hear? Huh. Is Ulmreich the only one? <laughs> or am I really low? So I'm using the same technique that I did here in the front. And like I said, I'm aiming for a bit of texture. And I usually, like I said, start with a an opaque base 
of the next color of the highlight color and then I fade it out with some stippling so for example here you can start putting in some more consistent dots because that's not gonna be a lot of different that's not gonna be a lot different that's what I was trying to say And yeah, again, I'm a fan of uh, texture in miniatures because it adds to that interest and makes them look more alive. And you can do a lot of different techniques and textures for example you could do lines or you can do dots Whatever you prefer, really. Yeah, exactly. The scale colors are so matte. Uh, you will see as it dries, there's almost... I mean, here you can see the, the light reflect still because it's still wet. But on the... just above and below, there's no reflection whatsoever. Maybe the tiniest hint. But you definitely get what you bargain for with these skill colors. <clears throat> I'm talking with doing the shoulder pad rims in gold rather than white, even though the fluff says white. <laughs> yeah, I did the same. I mean, especially on an on, an, on a champion, I kind of feel like you can get away with it. But even even if it wasn't a champion, I would have probably tried to do it in, in gold. Again, I mean, it's, it's your miniature, you have to look at it. more than anyone else so <laughs> you should rather do what uh, what you think looks good and not what anyone tells you to do so technically that means you shouldn't do what I say but uh, <laughs> I'm not saying you should but uh, you could consider that see how I saved that Let's see how long are we going. I don't want to make this too long because then oh, it's okay. We still have some time. stalker <laughs> nah I mean these communities live off of uh, loyal viewers if you don't have any viewers what uh, why would you stream you know so that's why you need people that watch you I just felt like you know on twitch at the moment 
or at the the time that I streamed because I had to run errands today uh, so I could not stream at my usual time and I had to stream later and then you know those time spots are occupied by others already and then no one watches you because they are um, watching the other people of course because they that's when they are on and that's what they used to watch at this time of the week and so on so I feel like moving to moving to YouTube when I feel like streaming um, yeah it's a it's a win 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 situation because I don't get more viewers on Twitch anyway and um, yeah I still can record some footage I don't have the overlays so I have some more raw footage and it's also up on on YouTube and people can come in and chat regardless and maybe some new people find me yeah so I guess that's a good idea to do when I when I want to stream later than my usual schedule then maybe it's better to not do that on Twitch Uh, I don't know how your red really looks, but on my screen it's a very beautiful color. Uh, it's yeah, it's it, it looks looks like this. Ah, uh, this is rather close. If I move it like that, yeah. If I move it like this, it's just a bit of a reflection. But it totally looks accurate. Like this, yeah. So the the scale colors are a tiny bit they have a bit of a problem with opaqueness sometimes. So that's why I'm going to need a few more layers here. Yeah, I'm starting to like this. I need some more. <laughs> On the bolt casing. Yeah, also, um, where's this other hand? Oh, here it is. I also need to, to do the bolt casing here. <clears throat> Probably gonna aim for that red. Or a similar red, of course, not the same. But yeah, I try to not. I try to limit my color palette uh, on the miniatures that I do, and I try to repeat the colors at least slightly, or at least as the base colors, and then highlight them differently. Or shade them differently or whatever uh, you want to whatever you want to do and achieve So yeah, I'm a bit unsure about this part because I feel like that's a bit of a casting fail or sculpting fail uh, because to have an edge that is a millimeter thick, um, yeah, <laughs> why would you do that? Why would you not have it run um, or come together and then just be a sharp line that you can highlight? I really don't get it. But I guess we have to go with it and make something out of it.
Okay, like I said, this needs a few layers to, to be opaque. And then we still have to take care about the the texture. How many different colors would you use on a miniature? Um, I don't limit myself. I mean, the thing is, the the black alone is already uh, black, gray, blue, and um, yeah, I'm also going to add a bit of red in the shadows. So, <coughs> in in one color alone, I usually have shades of of other colors again to make it more interesting so yeah I don't really limit myself <clears throat> but I I just try to you know take base colors for example I would probably use this red uh, the first red that we had also on the eyes and then go from there that's what I mean with limit it, if I said I limit myself in the number of colors then that was what I meant but I don't limit myself in yeah and then in trying to get variation into the miniature by adding more colors. Not sure not exactly sure what I said, but if that was that was the explanation for what I was trying to say, in case that got confusing. Okay. Yeah, let's touch this up. See, because I always hear you should only use two or three colors uh, and the spot color or it gets too busy. Yeah, uh, it can get busy, but I mean, hmm, how to explain that? I mean, just try to, to keep it, for example, um, if I used uh, red on the eagle, then that would maybe look weird, but since I have um, gray and here bone white and up here we have some white too. I mean just try to to vary your base color a bit if you want some variation, but also all that um, color theory is just you know, a rough measure. It's not like that. It's, it's, it's not exact science. It just can give you pointers on what could work and what maybe doesn't. But if you, you know, don't be afraid to do something else. <laughs> I mean, really. Just try to stay within reason.
Okay, what could we highlight this with? Um, I don't want to go. Hmm, all pure white. Let's see. Wait, uh, all pure red. I mean, I think what could look interesting is an orange. of a desaturated orange. Let's try this. I just mix a bit of that into the base color. Maybe start on some rather light areas. So this could potentially desaturate the whole thing by quite a bit. But if that happens, we just go over it again. It's not really a big deal. Okay, this all, uh, almost gives us a bit of a salmon hue to the whole thing. So I think I really like that. And again, I mean, especially with that technique, where you have a lot of dots anyway and uh, just texture. Just try to do something, and if you feel like it's uh, it's not really, well, maybe it's not intense enough, then you can mix a bit more color in. Maybe it's too intense, then tone it down. Just add some of the base color again. Um, I often feel like people are afraid to just try things. And uh, yeah, I really, I don't have an explanation for it. For it, I feel like sometimes it is uh, peer pressure, or pressure by, yeah, codexes, or stuff like that, or maybe, yeah, maybe your local hobby store, or maybe, maybe the games workshop itself. <laughs> I don't know. But sometimes, you know, I, I wish people would just try more things and don't be afraid to fail. Because even if you fail, you, you learn something and you know that you're not going to do that the next time. And uh, one more thing, like I said, it's rather easy to just paint over something and fix the quote-unquote mistake. Hey Francesco, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, for cloak and all kinds of uh, textiles. It's rather interesting. And I'm really not paying too much attention, so if this were like a competition miniature, I would probably go in and, and just do like this, uh, you know really just put on lines of dots and do it a lot more controlled but I'm just trying to to look how it looks overall trying to see how it looks overall almost gives a bit of a rust feel sort of like um, dry or well, sort of like horse skin <laughs> if that makes any sense but definitely definitely an interesting effect Okay, maybe 
just a hint more here. On the high up areas. here that's not good Okay, and then one thing that I want to try is to shade it now, just to see how intense we can go. And uh, adding the shadow color should um, <clears throat> should add that extra level of depth. Okay, my palette is a bit getting a bit small. But yeah, I just use a bit of black in the base color, trying not to overdo it to start with. And then I just start in the darker areas and basically do the same. Maybe even more, more black. Trying not to ruin the other effects. Painting that base line, sort of, and then fading it out with some stippling. Again, if you feel like it's too much. Just tone it down again, as bring it closer to the base color, and just go over it again. Yeah, I feel like we can still go a bit lighter. Um, maybe, let's see, uh, usually what you try to do on on red is have a bit of a mid-tone of orange and then just add, yeah, with a bit of black, just the base color, the base color and a bit of black mixed in, just slight variations. But yeah, going for red, uh, highlighted with a bit of a a pinkish color, also works pretty good, usually. So let's do that as a last layer. And see how that looks. Again, if it's too light, tone it down. 
it's not enough we can always add more Thanks to whoever just followed on Twitch. <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, check out my my Twitch channel as well. It is uh, just twitch.tv slash Tavarian. Just like my username here. Uh, it should be visible on the top of my... What is it? Uh, banner. where I usually stream <clears throat> I try to mix it up a bit and uh, go to YouTube to to increase exposure a bit but yeah that's where I usually uh, stream three times a week Okay, one last layer uh, of that pink. Add it to the mix. I feel like that feels, I, I think that feels pretty good. But I just don't want to overdo it. Just add that hint of a last highlight. I think we can go in lighter. Huh, maybe not so fast. <laughs> yeah, again, as with everything, uh, the more contrast you can put in, the better. Just try not to ruin your your effect that you built by going too light too fast. Again, the seam of the cloak, a bit tricky, but I think we'll just embrace the shitty sculpt here. <laughs> and emphasize, this quite, emphasize it quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think about the new Death Guard, for example? Mortarion and Typhus. So, just the final dots in that color. I 
feel like that looks pretty good. Really subtle, muted, but still pretty decent. Yeah, especially here, I kind of like the, you know, from black to that salmon uh, without really losing any intensity and still keeping a lot of contrast. Really like it. Um, but I'm just painting up old 90s miniatures. <laughs> Yeah, the, the issue that I have, like I said, is that they look too comicish for my taste. <clears throat> Alright, um, so I'll end in this little demo here. Don't forget to follow on YouTube if you haven't yet. I try to do more painting content again. Uh, but I also do sculpting content and uh, yeah, check out my my Twitch um, and if you are interested in learning new tips and tricks in condensed video tutorials uh, just take a look at my Patreon it's, you can find it under Patreon slash, wait, patreon.com slash Trovarian and um, for the VOD viewers I'm also going to put it in the description uh, yeah, hope you learned something and uh, again leave a follow Follow my uh, social media all the links are going to be in the description uh, Thanks for watching and see you next time Bye bye